Hey, 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 here I go now. Oh, hey, welcome to a new online lesson. This is the first online lesson that you will be working on for homework. Today, we'll be talking about colonization and carving up the new world. We'll be looking at New France, New Netherlands, and New Spain. Hopefully, by now, you've read through the sheet. You know what you're looking for, and we're going to go ahead and get started. So the first colony that we're going to look at is the New Netherlands. And let's first look at where was it. The New Netherlands was located on the island of Manhattan called New Amsterdam. The regions also spread along the Hudson River and the Delaware River. And it contained the areas of what is today New York, Delaware, New Jersey, and Connecticut. So that's where New Netherland was. So the New Netherlands, they made their money through trading. And a lot of stuff they traded was like furs, guns, pelts, different items. That whole idea of the Colombian exchange that we've talked about already in class. Their trading rivaled the French fur trade. And the types of animals that or fur that was traded by the French and later by the New Netherland settlers were beaver pelts, mink, otter, pelts that were used in clothing and high-end different types of designers. And they also formed the Dutch West India Company. And this had five offices in the New World. And a couple of those were in Amsterdam and Rotterdam, uh, New York, Albany area. And also they had different posts in Africa as well. And this kind of, kind of helped them control the trade of the area. And their, the Dutch West India Company, the biggest uh, success was capturing the seizure of a Spanish silver fleet that was headed from the Spanish colonies to Spain in 1628. And that made them very profitable. Now, the New Netherlands colonies was run uh, in a, a very particular way. The governor was a director general, ruled over New Netherland until it was taken by the English. And the Dust West India Company appointed the director general of New Netherland. So they were ruled by a governor, and later on they were taken over by the English. Now, when it came to interacting with Native Americans, the New Netherland colony sought alliances with these Native Americans. They were very friendly with the Iroquois, also known as the Haudenosaunee. And they rivaled the Huron, who were the Iroquois, the Haudenosaunee's enemies to the north and west. And they bought land from some Native Americans, but they also forced others off of their land. So they weren't always, the relationships weren't always nice and peachy. There was a little tension there as well. So now we're going to look at the colony of New France. New France started out in the Louisiana region, in New Orleans, present-day New Orleans, and it moved all the way up to the Great Lakes region and along the Mississippi River Valley. And you can see that lighter part of this map. That's where New France was. Now, the people of New France made their money through fishing, trapping for furs, and this was a huge, huge industry for them. The fur trade, and it literally wiped out a lot of the smaller animals that we see, such as beavers, such as even skunks, and some different types of mink and otters. That almost wipes it out because there was such a sought-after item was these precious furs. And trading was huge for them. New Orleans was a trade post, and you used the Mississippi River, and that was huge. It was a huge port that the French were able to control. And the French colonies had a very distinct way of running themselves, and it's very similar to the mother country or France. Social groups had, you had social groups. Kings were at the top of the social hierarchy. Then you had a council who advised the king. Then you have the couriers de bois that would help advise everyone else and kind of keep track of what was going on in their respected land pieces. Then you have the missionaries, and we've talked about missionaries before. They were the ones trying to convert Native Americans to Christianity. So the French had a very unique relationship with the Native Americans because they were very friendly with them and did not to a attempt to conquer the natives whatsoever. They traded with them and used them to help their fur traders trap more animals that they can send the pelts over and make money. And marriages between natives and the French was acceptable, and it was something that happened quite a bit. The final big colony we're going to start looking at is New Spain. And the first thing is, who came to colonize New Spain? And these were the conquistadors. And these were Spanish explorers who came to the New World to get rich and serve God. And one of the ones that we've kind of mentioned is the Hernando Cortez, a very famous conquistador that ended up ending the Aztec reign over central Mexico during that time. And the Spanish made their money in the New World through farming and and mining for gold and silver. And that was huge. They came looking for gold. If remember back Christopher Columbus, he came looking for gold and he would send the natives out to get it. If they didn't come back with enough gold, he'd have their hands cut off. So their big push was gold. They also farmed. Encomiendas, they were slave labor of Native Americans on these plantations. And that happened quite a bit in the New World under Spanish rule. 
Now, the Spanish had a very strict social structure and how the new colonies were set up. So they had viceroys, and viceroys were a leader of a region representing a king. They had strict stru social structures, such as peninsulares, who were of the highest class, born in Spain, and they owned the land. The Creoles, they were born in America to Spanish parents, wealthy and well-educated. The Mestizos, mix of Spanish and Native American ancestry, and worked on farms or ranches. And the Indians, Native Americans, were at the lowest class and kept in poverty on purpose. And the customs between the, of the Spanish New World was really a mixture of Spanish ideas and Native American. The whole idea of cultural diffusion, where two cultures kind of share things because of their proximity with each other. So some of the things that they shared that were similar were religion, language, education, food, art, and clothing. So those are just some of the things that were shared between these two groups. So that about wraps things up for our lesson here today. And one of the things that we're going to talk about, we're going to kind of focus on two in particular colonies next class. And these are the two notable colonies. First is Roanoke, also known as the Lost Colony. It's always a mystery because all the people all of a sudden disappeared. But more on that next class. And then Jamestown. England finally got it right. This was the first successful colony of the English Empire and the New World. And it was kind of headed and led by none other than Mr. John Smith. I hope you have a great day. I'll talk to you in class. Thank you for listening.